Welcome back to the fight pit, ladies and gentlemen. We are back. You know how we do it. The boys in the house, bringing you the picks, bringing you the breakdowns, bringing you the predictions, bringing you all that good, good UFC MMA content every single week, every single UFC fight card. Today, we are covering UFC Fight Night Magni versus Paratus going down at the UFC Apex in Vegas on Saturday, November 9th. DJ, intro music. What up, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you for joining us once again. As always, it is the boys in the house, House Call Sports, the Fight Pit, bringing you UFC Fight Night, Neil Magny versus Carlos Pratis going down Saturday, November 9th, UFC Apex. Uh, contrary to pop popular belief, this UFC Apex card will be worth tuning into. Uh, I, I am very excited about a lot of the main card fights and a lot of the uh, undercard fights as well. So uh, we will get into that. Before we get too deep into it, I'm going to do some intros. I got to do some intros. We got we to gotta let you know who we got in the house with us today. Directly, yes, directly to my right, but technically Dude, my first left. Dude, first try. Oh, I am so locked in. I am so <laughs> locked in. We got the gold mule himself. Kyle, Kyle, how are you today, my man? Dude, you know me. I'm living the dream. My bears are falling apart as per usual, and I'm getting to talk about some fights. What can I what what can I ask for more than that? That's that I think that's really all that life is about. Um I I, I as a Cowboys fan, I 100 percent understand where you are because there's uh, there's not a whole whole lot of but i mean celtics we're, won, we're both Dodgers shopping won. for new head coaches i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna have to eat it in nfl this year and i'm totally fine with that totally That's fine good. with that um the boys downstairs we got matt talks mma matt how are you today my brother doing great i'm excited to go over this card Let's go, let's go. And also holding it down, one of the staples, the king of the bad beats. We got Sean Ryan Sports. Sean, how are you today, my man? Doing good. We'll do better if my picks don't bust by like half a yard in parlays. That would be fantastic. That was the heartbreaker half yesterday. Yards, half a yard. Nice. Oh, man, man. My, my catch yesterday was i had uh uh patrick mahomes on the over on rushing yards and i had baker mayfield to score a touchdown almost got both of them but those are the only two that sunk me nailed deandre dude deandre hopkins has been my favorite uh receiver for since forever ago Clemson. um so i just i knew them yeah yeah, I knew that him going to the Chiefs was going to be such a problem. That was such a stupid. They should have banned the Chiefs from getting him. There is no <laughs> reason round they pick. should have been. They never <laughs> should have been allowed pick. to get him. Insane, insane. Oh, um, but you guys shit. make sure you tune in. <laughs> and a couple, uh, a couple of loose cigarettes too, for good measure. Um, you guys make sure. Uh, with uh, the House Call Sports Gridiron page, you can uh, click in our channel, scroll all the way down. It'll let you know all the other, our, our sister channels going on. We cover just about everything. Uh, so make sure you're tuned into the NFL episodes. It's just like this, except it's all football. You'll love it. We have uh, fight nights. Uh, we are just about to, oh man, we're just about uh, right on the, the heels of uh 310 is it 309 or 310 next 309 was is it the so 30 is uh yeah okay numbers numbers i'm a numbers guy uh you know but they they get cloudy they get cloudy later on in the in the year um but we are we are right on the heel uh, coming up on on some some big end of the year fights big end of the year cards 
it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, man. You would think they would have run out of stuff to to throw at us, uh, but it, they just keep on coming. And the end of the year is going to be exciting. Uh, some big matchups we've been looking forward to, not the least of which going down on this card. I like I like a lot of the matchups on this card. Uh, Neil Magny and Carlos Pretis in the main event, co-main event. We got Cody No Love, Garbrandt, and Miles Johns. Also, Gerald Mearshart going up against Rainier De Ritter, former uh, I believe double champ at One FC, uh, making his UFC debut just a bunch of good stuff on this one guys just a bunch of good stuff on this one before i get too much further into all of this madness that we got going down on saturday november 9th i have to give a wonderful wonderful shout out to our sponsor vivid seats vividseats.com online ticket marketplace where fans can buy and sell tickets to sports concerts and theater events nationwide they have a 100 percent buyer guarantee plus the only ticket rewards program around grab your seats they're guaranteed just like your 11th ticket is on them vivid seats has you covered empowering every fan to get to the live events that shape their most vivid moments and memories vivid seats is committed to getting you to the events you love more easily and more often there's over 100 no over 140 million memory making tickets have been sold on vividseats.com 19 million plus pump fans that have found their event tickets through vivid seats and 1 million plus unique and in-demand events sold on their site so hit the link in the description to there we go there we go i gotta get this i gotta get this pointing thing down man um hit the link in the description thank you so much to vivid seats for holding it down the boys in the house sure do appreciate you first one that we are going to jump into is oh man sean sean I gave you this one because I knew that you would do it justice. I knew that you would hold it down for me on this one. Uh, first one, I'm going to throw to Sean. Sean is going to let us know about Luana Pinheiro versus Jillian Robertson. So Luana Pinheiro is 11-3, two KOs, five subs. Uh, five, uh, she's five foot two, 31 years old. They have the same reach, so... Reach isn't going to be really much of a thing. She's 4-2 in the UFC, um, but she's lost her last two fights by finish, a submission and a KO. So that's a little tough. Um, Gillian Robertson, 14-8, two KOs, nine submissions, 5'5", five 29 years old. Once again, same reach. 11-6 uh, in the UFC, way more experience, way harder sh strength of schedule. Uh, two fight win streak has a little momentum. They're both good grapplers. This is one of those fights. If you want to see two people on the ground, seeing good maneuvers, if you're into BJJ in general and wrestling, this is one of those fights for you. Uh, I think Jillian Robertson does have the advantage on the ground and the experience on the ground. Could there be an upset? There could, but I'm, I think Jillian Robertson is just going to be too much on the ground. Uh, I, I highly doubt this fight staying on the feet unless Luana basically says that, yeah, my chance is to try to play jab and circle the octagon with her. But we really haven't seen that out of her too much either. She's been more of, uh, let's get this fight to the ground. Even though she does have two KOs, it's just it's not her, her game. So I'm going to say this is going to be a ground game. Once again, I'd love to pick finish because I love doing that, picking finishes for every fight, but it is a women's fight and it's tough sometimes to do that. So I'm going to be picking. It's going to go to decision. I'm going to pick Jillian Robertson. Um, I'm going to I'm going to give a 
Pinheiro, a little respect. I'm going to say 29, 28. I don't think it's going to be a 30, 27. My bet pick is going to distance or over two and a half rounds, whichever way. And uh, I have for winning the fight. I have Jillian Roberts. Robertson. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I knew that you would do me justice on that one. I knew. I just knew it was in good hands with you. Next one up, we are going to, woo, we're going to keep it with your boy. We're going to keep it with your boy here. And I am going to let you know about Gerald Mearshart versus Rainier DeRitter. Now, as I stated before, Rainier DeRitter, former 1FC fighter, former 1FC champion, making his UFC debut one of um in the last episode i flubbed the words and i said striker because adhd i'm going a mile a minute one of the most savage grapplers grapplers that you can possibly hope to get uh coming from any other organization besides the ufc rainier de ritter uh is not gonna have an easy go of it i would say um but gerald mearshart Gerald Mearshart is one of those guys. You can't ever really count him out. He does leave himself open at times. He is capable of losing a fight by finish, but he is just a gamer, man. He's a gamer. He's one of those guys that you just cannot count out until the ref has ended the fight or until the bell has ended the fight. Uh, Gerald Mearshart at 37 and 17 Rainier de Ritter uh, career as a pro 17 and 2 Gerald Mearshart with 6 KO wins 29 submission wins good lord and two decision wins he's riding a two fight win streak uh, over Edmund Shabazian uh, in August August 24th of this year and then Brian Barbarena in March of this year, this year. Both of those were submission wins in the second round. Now Rainier de Ritter, he is uh, as I said 17 and 2, 4 KOs, 11 submissions and two decision wins. Last fight was in July against Magomed Murad Kasayev and uh, I believe that was his last fights uh oh no that wasn't the last one in one uh that was at uh uae warriors 51 uh emirates emirates but won that fight tko so they are both coming in off uh finish wins uh man rainier de ritter like i said if you have not checked out his highlights definitely go do that this is going to be a crazy i don't know exactly how this could go because both of these guys being so high level with their grappling could be a stalemate. Could lead to uh, uh, two grapplers striking. We've seen it plenty of times. We've seen it, you know, uh, like Usman and Colby Covington ended up standing the entire time. Not very often do we see grapplers try to out grapple each other. I think this might be one of those fights. I think this might be one of those fights. I think this might be one where the... Mm, the bragging rights are on the line. The the grappling bragging rights are on the line. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. These uh, Rainier de Ritter at a sizable favorite, sizable favorite, and it's understandable. But people making those UFC debuts, bro, you never know. You never know. Um, we we also have picks from Gage on this one. Gage says, unfortunately. Uh, the the hype on Rainier de Ritter is real in his opinion. He is also choosing Rainier de Ritter. That's going to be the official pick. Uh, the rounds, I would say on this one, I'm going to assume that it is not going the distance. So I'm going to say under two and a half, which is my default pick. And uh, the bet on this one, I would say fight to not go the distance uh, would be the safest bet. Uh it could go either way. People making their debut, grapplers, you never know. It might be a stalemate. They could they could drag it out, but safest bet if you're going to bet on this one, I would say fight not to go the distance. Fight to not go the distance.
And that's going to take us on to the next fight. This one I assigned specifically for you, for the boy, because I know, I know I, that this is going to be a good one. And I think th this one could be surprising. We could get a surprise on this one. We got Ricky Tercios versus Bernardo Sopage. Kai Guy, take it away. This fight is, uh, it's the two fights exist with this fight in my brain for me. It's the fight that I want to happen and the fight that I think is probably going to happen. Um, I love Ricky Tercios. Don't get it twisted. I think Ricky Tercios is probably one of my favorite fighters right now. Uh, just really fun to watch. The complete mixed martial artist and truly, I mean, martial artist in the like classic sense like this guy is just the textbook definition of a martial artist he respects all the disciplines in such a reverent way and it's really fun to see him every time he steps into the octagon he's bringing in of course that 13 and 4 record he's got three knockouts one submission on the other side of it bernando sopage 11 and 3 24 year old phenom coming in after a not so great debut, he got um, I don't I think it was TKO um, over Vin uh, against Vinicius Oliveira. He was TKO'd. Um, of course, really really impressive. Won three of his last four, um, seven knockouts, three submissions, seven first round finishes. I really don't disagree with the betting line favoring um so Paj, i think it's a really wide line and it doesn't really take into account tergios's experience and the fact that he is the older bigger fighter and you know the last time bernardo uh bernardo so Paj faced a bigger fighter at uh bantamweight he got knocked out uh vinicius Oliveira is a big bantamweight ricky tercios is also a bigger bantamweight he's got a pretty big reach advantage he is taller and he's probably going to have a little bit more weight on him. So. Yes, do it. Do oh, it. man. Okay, no, I'm doing it. I'm going with Ricky Tercios because here's the thing. Brandon Sopage is going to shoot more takedowns than Ricky Tercios, despite the fact that he is probably better on the feet than Tercios is. Um, and I think that's going to be a big mistake. I think he's going to try and go for ground and pound like he – like he has in the past and ricky tercios is going to be able to exploit some kind of mistake because sopage is a younger fighter give me ricky tercios by by a submission i it's yeah no it's happening i love it let's go <laughs> baby That's we're going exactly. ricky tercios uh under let's go under two and a half i think he's gonna get sopage a little bit comfortable lull him into some you know some false security and get a late submission um yeah i like it i like it quite a bit i love it that's exactly exactly to a t what i was hoping for in this one um kyle are we betting on this one i like over two and a half with this one it's either going to be a late submission for tercios or i think it goes to the cards i don't think sopage is going to be able to knock out tercios but you know oh i need <laughs> I, I, just, I, oh, I like Tercios by submission in this. I don't know what it is. I dig it. I dig it. That's, like I said, to a T, exactly what I was going for. Thank you so much for that. Uh, next one up, we are going to take it downstairs. Matt Talks MMA with the breakdown for... Cover me, guys. I'm going in. Carolina Kovokovic. Carolina. Man, you Carolina. were so close. You got <laughs> Kovokovic. Kovokovic. Dang. I, the only thing that I, I spent some time in Germany, uh, overseas. The only thing that I've ever remembered from any of those names overseas is that W's sound like v's beyond yep. that that is i dirk Nowitzki. that's it that's it that's all i retained in my time there um Don't sorry matter. matt matt let me give you the proper setup matt talks mma 
is going to let us know about Carolina Kovalkiewicz. Let's go! Versus Denise Gomes. Matt, take it away. All right, so I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to go with Denise Gomes. Um, Carolina's almost four years old. She's 39 years old, and she's going up against Denise, which is uh, who's 24 years old, so there's obviously a huge age difference there, 15 years. And although Carolina is uh, four and one in her last five, she's on a pretty good um, uh, winning record here. She did lose her last fight by decision, uh, but <clears throat> I think Denise Gomes is going to really push the pace, be up in her face the whole fight. Um, as for an official bet, I'm going to go by decision. If you want some, in their last 10 fights, there's only been three finishes. And two of those have been by Denise Gomez. So I think that it's going to be a pretty safe bet um, for that. And then as for an official pick, I'm going to go with Denise Gomez as well. Hell yes. Hell yes. To the T again. I love it. I love it when we are all on the same page this way. It is I so really beautiful. Like that. I really like the knockout for Gomes in that one as well, just because the significant strike defense for Gomes is a lot better than Kovalkiewicz. Like, Kovalkiewicz takes a lot of damage, and I think it's going to come back to haunt her with Gomes because Gomes has power at 115. Interesting. Yeah, I can also Interesting. See going KO as well. Great stuff, guys. I like that. I like that. And as much as it... It's, it pains me to say, man, I've been losing my ass trying to bet on these older fighters that I just really don't want to see lose. And uh, it hasn't it hasn't hurt too much up until the last couple weeks. Um, but for Carolina, you love her. You can't not love her. She's a she's a vet. She's one of those ones that have been holding down the the women's divisions for quite some time, had some of those beautiful uh rivalries those those high profile fights uh title fights up in the mix earlier on a while ago and it's it's tough it's tough but looking at uh her as a uh, plus 340 she's still wow she is still number 15 in the division um but denise gomes yeah she's she's a problem she is a problem Before we get into the round robin for the co-main and the main event, I'm going to shout out just a couple of fights on the prelims for you guys to keep an eye on. Some picks that I think might might just make the cut, might make the cut, something to think about. Um, and I'll also open up the floor for you guys. Let us know who you like and uh, any ones that stand out to you. Sean Gore a name you guys haven't heard for a little while. I feel like it's been forever, but I looked and apparently it's only been since 2022, I believe, since he has competed. Yes, October 29th, 2022. Trayshawn Gore uh, was, I believe, uh, the Black Zillions versus American Top Team uh, season of the Ultimate Fighter. I might be wrong on that. Um, but I know that he is from, from out that way. He is four and two going against Antonio Tricoli to open the night, bro. That one I think is going to be a sweet fight. Middleweight fight. I smell a finish. Uh, Treshawn Gore, uh, four and two. You would, it's, I feel like he's been around forever. I feel like he's been around forever. It's crazy. He only has six pro fights. Um, his last fight was a submission win over Josh Fremd back in 2022. Prior to that, fought Cody Brundage, fought Brian Battle, and uh, both of those guys still around. Uh, and Brian Battle, don't even get me started. Don't even get me started. Antonio Tricoli, this dude, this dude, 12 and 4, 3 KO wins, five submission wins, uh, fought Shara in his last one, got TKO'd. Uh, prior to that, had a submission win, no contest on Dana White Contender Series, and then uh, just a lot, a lot of solid wins coming by way of decision and finishes here and there, kind of bouncing around, but not going to be an easy fight at all. So I think that's a great fight to open up the night. The other one of note, the fight right after that, Gaston Balanos versus Cortavius Romius. Gaston Bolaños, somebody that I was 
that I have been a big fan of, that I was really high and mighty on coming into the UFC, fighting out of uh, CSA in Dublin, California, one of the gyms that was not too far away from where I was born and raised. I'm a big fan of a lot of the fighters that have come out of there. Of course, I'm I'm, I'm just a fan of everybody from out there, so no big surprise. But Gaston Bolaños, one of the best kickboxing and Muay Thai strikers in the UFC. Now, I know it hasn't been super evident because transitioning to UFC MMA at that high level hasn't gone super smooth for him, but he... Trust me when I tell you that he is capable of putting a highlight reel finish into the uh, the mix for performance of the night at any time, at any time. His last fight was a tough one against Marcus McGee. He got TKO'd, but that was a striker's delight, and I was loving every minute of it. Um, prior to that, he, he fought Aaron Phillips. He, he fought in Bellator a handful of times, had a lot of great KOs in that one. Pretty much every win in Bellator he had was a KO. Yeah, it was. Goodness gracious. Um, he Guys from out there, you will see. Guys from CSA. Uh, the other one, Eddie Abasolo. Some of the Kyrian Fitzgibbons in at CSA, not to sound like I'm kissing ass too much, but one of the best coaches, one of the best striking coaches, the striking that comes out of that gym, dude, I cannot even tell you. Zach Bunnell from here in, uh, out, out of Reno out here too. Some of the best Muay Thai and kickboxing striking that you will see around. I highly, highly recommend that you guys go look up Gaston Bolaños, Zach Bunnell, Eddie Abasolo, uh, Kevin Ross, uh, just there's so many great Muay Thai fighters that have come out of there. So I'm excited for that one. I like Gaston Bolaños in that one, but it's going to be another tough fight. He's going up against uh, Cortavius Ramius. Get this, his nickname, Are You Not Entertained? Longest nickname ever. Coolest nickname in quite a while. But uh, And it's for a good reason. He's got two KO wins, five submission wins and two decision wins. He also came off of Dana White's Contender Series, and that's that's going to be a sweet fight. It's going to be a sweet fight. So first two fights of the night, definitely make sure you are tuned in for those. Also, some names of note. We have Cody Stamen going up against Damon Blackshear. Banger. Banger, baby. Kyle, I'm definitely asking you about that one, too. Um, we also have Elizu Zaleski Dos Santos versus... Zach Scroggin, uh, who is undefeated. Matthew Semmelsberger versus Charlie Radke. That's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. Really, really cool fights on these uh, these prelims. I do like uh, the the first two fights not to go the distance. I do smell a finish. Also, the Cody Stamen and Damon Blackshear and the Matthew Semmelsberger and Charlie Radke. Don't know if I'm really... Don't know if I if I feel good enough on them to say fight not to go the distance, but I would not be surprised if those. I wouldn't be surprised if all four of the fights that I just named ended before the final bell because these are not the highest profile, but very very good fights. Um, I will open the floor. Anybody anybody else that you guys want to mention anything you want to throw out there? Kyle, we'll start with you. I know you got your eyes on. Uh, anytime. Blackshear. Anytime. I can watch Devon Blackshear fight. I'm watching it. And anytime I can watch Cody Stamen fight, I'm watching it. And the fact that I don't have to watch two different fights to make that happen this weekend is pretty freaking awesome. These two are some of my favorite Bantamweights. It's going to be a ridiculously fun fight. I like Blackshear in that fight. I like that to not go the distance. Uh, yeah, no, give me give me Blackshear by a, by a, by a knockout. Let's go. Totally I just understand. Like I just like totally it too much. Understand. Also, anytime you can watch Matthew Semmelsberger's ridiculous mullet, it's worth it. So tune in. Dude, Semmelsberger and Radke in the in the cage at the same time. Oh, that's there will be there will be some curse words, folks. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Sean. Any any uh, any prelim fighters that you are you are looking to highlight anything any any bets anything that you want to throw out there? Yeah, I'm gonna jump on with Kyle there and anything with Demond Blackshear. You have to he comes into the UFC and gets a twister, 
Like, what are you? <laughs> that's insane. There's, I think, three or four twisters ever landed in the UFC history, and that's that's unbelievable. And then I think he took another fight in like two weeks right after too. So it's the guy's the guy's a stud. So I'm he's a, I'm automatically a fan for life for him. Even if he goes on a skid or anything, I don't care. Demon Blackshear is my guy. I'm, I'm I'm supporting him. Can't say I blame you. Can't say I blame you. And I do absolutely, as a person outside of fighting and everything, I do absolutely love Cody Stamen. Very tough fight. Very tough fight. Uh, Matt, Matt, any any prelim fighters you want to highlight? Any bets? Anything you want to throw out there? Uh, not prelim fighters, but I'm really looking forward to the main event. Seeing more of Carlos Prades. Um, see what he has to offer to Neil Magny. Bro, this is going to be sick. This is going to be sick. Apex cards still hitting, folks. Still hitting. I stand by it. I guarantee it. And that will take us on into the co-main event of the evening. We got Cody No Love Garbrandt versus Miles Johns. I will set up the intros give you a little bit on each fighter and then we will hit the round robin and get those picks cody no love garbrandt 14 and 6 11 ko wins three decision wins coming off of a submission loss to davis and figueredo at ufc 300 prior to that he was on a two fight win streak against brian kelleher and trevin jones miles johns sitting at a 15 and 2 record with 4 KO wins, 2 submission wins, 9 decision wins. He is currently riding 3 wins in his last 4 fights. One of them was an overturned no contest against Dan Argueta. Uh but besides that, he has a uh decision, unanimous decision wins over Douglas Silva de Andrade and Cody Gibson and Vince Morales in those other 3 fights. So this one, I definitely, definitely love the fact that Cody Garbrandt is plus money. Uh, not going to lie. Very, very obvious who I'm going to be going with on that one. And there's just, you know, we we do our picks. We we use our heads. We make money. We, we win. But I'm just that guy. I'm that guy who's always going to pick his favorite fighters. Cody Garbrandt has been, even though he's from Ohio, he uh, I've been a fan of him ever since he moved out to uh, Team Alpha Male. He's, I believe, in Vegas now, but still just one of those guys that I've loved since he was an amateur, since uh, not amateur, since he was uh, in before he was in the UFC. I was a big fan of his, been a big fan of him all the way up through the rise and the ups and the downs does not matter to me i'm riding with cody no love on this one uh kai guy let us know who you got i'll keep this short and sweet it, it really depends on what version of cody we get in the octagon because there's a version of cody garbrandt that beats miles johns very handedly and looks like he's getting back on track and there's a version of Cody Garbrandt that goes in there and looks timid and gets outpointed and loses by decision. And we're stuck with this same conversation. There's also a version of Cody that gets cracked and gets knocked out. Um, I don't think that's going to happen on this one. Um, I think it's far more likely that Johns would go to a decision if he gets the win. Um, I really want Cody to go out there and put on a dominant performance and get the TKO. Um, do I think that's going to happen? I don't know. Um it's remained to be seen if Cody can consistently be that guy that's going to show up and show out every single time, because there have been times where he's not looked nearly close to the fighter that we're used to seeing in the octagon when we are watching Cody Garbrandt fight. Um, yeah, I've gone back and forth on this so many times. I think I'm going, fuck, I'm going to regret this. I'm going Cody. Let's okay, go. Oh, man. That's okay. I feel awful when, uh, when on the I'm board. the reason that it doesn't happen. <laughs> well, hey, if it makes you feel any better, you definitely will not be the only person picking Cody No Love on this one. We riding with No Love uh, on the top floor. Bottom floor, downstairs, boys. Matt, let us know who you got in this co-main. I'm going to go with Cody Garbrandt. I think that... This is a pretty good matchup for him. 
I, there's only one of two ways that I feel like you can really beat him. You either go the wrestling route, like Davis and Figueredo, the submission route, or the or you knock him out. And Miles Johns is not really that guy. He has five of his seven wins are by decision. So, you know, he's not really much of a KO type of guy. Um, you know, with that being said, he could go out there and KO him. Cody Carpent doesn't have the best chin, but I don't really like the chances of that happening. I think that Cody Garbrandt, um, every time he's stepped up in competition, he, not every time, but in his last five fights, you know, Rob Font, Kai Kara France, Davison Figueredo, against those like upper level guys, he, he does lose, but I think Miles Johns is not really on that level yet. You know, his last, uh, Cody Garbrandt's last two wins are Trevin Jones and Brian Kelleher. I think that Miles Johns is probably around that same level. And I ultimately see Cody Garbrandt getting it done by a knockout official pick um, under over a round and a half, I'm going to say. Hell yeah, baby. Hell yeah. This is working out so much better than I expected. Sean, Sean, it all comes down to Sean. It all comes down to Sean Ryan Sports. Let us know, man. Let us know. How are we going? Matt made some really good points, and that's where I kind of went off my decision was when he, like, he was talking about how Miles Johns is not that guy when it comes to the finishes, having six finishes in 17 fights, uh, having two of his wins be by finish in the UFC. I, you got to finish Cody to win the fight. He doesn't lose by decision. That's just, you got to finish him, and Cody's speed is even in the fights that he lost by KO, he was faster than the guy he's been fighting. He fights smart. He has the power still. It's not like he doesn't. He hasn't been knocked out in a while. Like, he got submitted by Davison Figueroa. That's not getting knocked out. That's not hurting the chin. It's It's been a, it's been a couple years. So, we'll see how, like, we just saw Dominic Reyes come back from a fight a couple months ago. We thought his chin was destroyed, and he took a year and a half off came back and fought and his chin was good he took some heavy shots too i think that might be the same here with cody i'm hoping obviously we're everyone's a cody garbrandt fan you, you just can't not be and i'm going to say cody's going to get this one done i'm going to make it unanimous for us i'm also going to pick cody garbrandt by knockout my bet pick will be under two and a half. I just don't see this going to decision. Either somehow Miles Johns finds a way to get the finish. But I think I don't think that's the case. I just don't see this going to decision. So that'll be my bet pick, but I will also be picking Cody Garbrandt. It is officially a unanimous because we also have Gageimus. Shout out to the 12 Gage. He has also uh cody no love by ko oh let's go not very often not very often anybody that's following along our official picks are always our money lines but when it comes to the main and the co-main we do the round robins not very often we get unanimous but we are unanimous on cody no love for this one let's go i got a feeling that lock and dog are gonna end up being main and co-main on this one I wouldn't doubt it. I would not doubt it. With that, we will jump on in to the main event of the evening. We have number 15 ranked Neil Magny taking on Carlos Prates of the uh, Fighting Nerds, right? Yeah, Fighting Nerds again. These guys these guys man uh some intros real quick and then we will hit that around robin we have neil magny at a 29 and 12 going up against carlos prates at a 20 and 6 record neil magny has eight ko wins Four submission wins, 17 decision wins, coming off of a TKO loss to Michael Morales back in August. Carlos Prates, though. Man, these odds, if you look at these odds, you would be like, what is going on? But if you dive a little deeper, like we do, 
you will understand. Carlos Prates at a 20 and 6 record with 15 KO wins, three submission wins, two decision wins, currently riding a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 fight win streak for Carlos Prates. Uh, most recently fought uh, Li Zheng Liang back in August at UFC 305, finished him by KO in the second round. Prior to that, beat Charlie Radke by KO in the first round. Prior to that, Trevin Giles by KO in the second round. Prior to that, Mitch Ramirez by TKO in the second round. Dude is crazy, crazy with the striking. Um, and also just a very, a very fun, you know, personality. He, he, it's out there. So he's, he smokes cigarettes. It's, it's fun. It's fun to watch. I remember those days, the good old days, just going to, going to striking class, kickboxing, and then having a stoke afterwards. Uh, I don't do it anymore, but I, I do love seeing that, that, those old souls. I love, I love anytime you see guys like that doing well. It's so much fun to watch. Um, this one, very difficult to pick against Carlos Prates on this one, but also very difficult to count Neil Magny out because as soon as you count Neil Magny out, he gets it done. He gets it done. It's, he's one of those guys. It's ridiculous. Very well-rounded. He's a vet that not too many styles that you can throw at him that he hasn't seen and also won against. Uh, very important to note that. He's he has he has wins every which way. Um, the odds currently sitting at a minus eight hundred for Carlos Prates, Neil Magny at a plus five fifty. So very good for Neil Magny betters. Very good for Neil Magny fans. Very difficult spot though. Very difficult spot. I will start it off. Of course, I'm just going to take the obvious answer here. I'm going to say Carlos Prates by KO. Given that Neil Magny is coming off of a KO loss, it's kind of it's kind of tough not to. It's kind of tough not to. But as I said, if Neil Magny is able to pull it out, power to him. I will eat that. I will eat my words. I'm fully capable of doing it, and uh, I would not be upset at doing it if Neil Magny is able to get it because this is going to be a hell of a fight. A hell of a fight. Um, we'll take it back the other way, Matt. Matt, start us off on this one. Let us know who you got for this main event. I'm going to go with the obvious answer. I'm going to go with uh, Carlos Prades. I think that the real big question here is if Neil Magny is going to be able to submit him or take him down. And Carlos Prades hasn't been submitted in – he's been submitted twice in his, in his career, and that was 10 years ago. That was the last time that had happened, and I just don't see it happening to um, Carlos Prates. I think he's on a different level, and as – as uh, known, you know, his striking is way better than Neil Magny. I don't think Neil Magny is going to last very long if he can't take him down, especially after the last knockout that he just um, went through with, uh, who was it, um, Rice. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think his chin is going to be able to hold up very long. And I would say the official pick, Carlos Prades. And then if I were going to bet on it, I would bet under two and a half rounds. I like that. I like that. I agree. I don't think this one goes very long at all. If Neil Magny is Neil Magny is able to to drag people to the deep waters, but didn't work out for him in that last one. So this is this is by no means a a step down in competition. Might be rankings wise. I'm not sure where Morales lays, but very difficult spot. Difficult spot. Sean, hit us with it. Who you got in this main event? Uh, I think this one's going to be very quick and easy. Uh, Carlos Pratos, I even put in my notes, what the fuck? Like, it's just <laughs> that insane. Nine straight KOs. The last time he has won or lost a fight that wasn't by a KO was when he won by decision in 2019. So he's been five years of just starching people. Um, yeah, and he's been on a hot streak in the ufc too just starching everyone too i think this will be over extremely quickly neil bagney needs to get it to the ground immediately and keep him there and try to get a submission but like matt said it's been 10 years since submission so i'm gonna say i'm gonna go exactly off of matt i'm going i'm going process by ko and i'm going uh, that'll be my official uh process by ko winning and then 
I will also say under two and a half rounds. Solid, solid, very solid, gentlemen. Cannot say I blame you at all. Kai let's, guy. let's not even stand on ceremony here. It's Pratis. It's a knockout under two and a half. Boom. Done. Bada bing. Bada, bada boom. Let's get it. 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 Last one to uh, throw out there. Uh, Gagemus is also going Carlos Prates. Uh, Gage has selected the method of victory execution. So I'm not sure what the odds are on that one, but I gotta I gotta assume there's a little bit of plus money on it. A little bit of plus money. Not too many execution victories going down, but Prates is capable. Um, let's wrap it up with the lock and the dog of the week. I will start it with Gage. Gage, no surprise. His lock is Carlos Prates. His dog is Cody No Love. I will go ahead and second that. Correct. Uh, Cody, yeah. <laughs> Cody No Love currently at a plus 145. Carlos Pretas at a minus 800. If you parlay both of those together, you get a plus 176. So we're still getting plus money on the dollar on that one. Uh, even though it's a very, very large discrepancy in that main event. Um, Kyle, I take it. I take it we're we're unanimous so far. No doubt. Bam. Matt, let us know. Any any anybody else you want to throw out there? I'm gonna have to third that. Um yeah, I would say him as well. I dig it. Sean, where are we going, yeah, my man? We're unanimous on this. Co main main event. There you go. There it is, folks. Locke, Carlos Prates, and Dog. Cody, no love, Garbrandt. Do it for your boys. Do it for your boys. We've actually been doing pretty well uh, as far as our picks are uh, going in the last one. The uh, I can't remember offhand, but we have been nailing uh, most of our official picks. The mains and co-mains is kind of where we get we get a little scattered lately. They've been some tough ones, but for the most part, if you exclude me. Everybody else has been nailing them. Um, the official picks, I'll go ahead and put them on the board. Bring. And there you go. That is going to wrap up the episode for UFC Fight Night. Magni versus Prates. All the picks, all the bets, all the rounds. We got you, baby. Lock and dog, we've been killing it. So make sure you are paying attention, paying attention. Uh, thank you guys so much. Any any final parting words? Anything to leave us with? Enjoy these cards. They're fight nights, but damn it, they're good fighters on them. Tune in. They are they're great. After this fight night, we got UFC 309, Jones versus Stipe. So this is the last fight night, and then we got the big boys coming in. Ooh. Can't wait for that. Cannot and not not to uh, not to forget the rematch, Charles Oliveira and Michael Chandler. <laughs> bro, bro, I have personally, like I said, I'm always going with my favorite guys. Michael Chandler has been one of my favorites since way before everybody else knew about him back in the bellator days um and i i am still ready to die on the hill that michael chandler gets counted out way too much he has he has been this close to finishing everyone he's lost to and everybody that he's beat he's beat emphatically so i think that this one is this is one that i've been looking forward to i cannot wait and who doesn't love a Charles Oliveira fight? Who doesn't? Point them out, and I will I will handle it because that's they they're not allowed here. They're not allowed here. If you don't if you don't fucks with Charles Oliveira, you cannot hang with us. You cannot sit with us. Um, they the the next one's coming up. Going to be super fun. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the Fight Pit on YouTube. Uh, follow us on Instagram, the official fight pit. You got all of our tags on here. Follow us too. We got you. Thank you so much, boys, for hanging in the fight pit. We are out. Peace.